So let's have a little think about the process. Um, let's kind of rattle through this a little bit. So um, if you've made your way to the, the end of the guidance report, you'll see there's a page that says acting on the evidence. Okay, so this is when we get to, kind of get to the bit where, so we've read the recommendations, we kind of, let's say we, we buy into them. Um, what do we need to do to embed them, to make it happen? How do we make a start? Because that's, the, that's very often the hardest thing. Where do you start? So we've spent quite a bit of time on doing this because the responses back from schools have been, have been just that, yeah, the guidance is, yeah, we can, we can find not, you know, not really too troublesome there, but we just don't really know what to do next. So we've worked with uh, about half a dozen schools, perhaps, who uh, we know have implemented the guidance or um, in a couple of other cases who've kind of done the, the, the minor course at the IOE and simply done you know, the similar thing and they've really picked their brains and said okay so you know, how did you make a start? What did you do? Let's let's try and get some of that knowledge out of your um, out of your school and you know share it a bit more widely. Um, I've just got this up here because this is um, <coughs> a model by uh, Thomas Gusky, he's an American academic. Um, and it's quite useful, it was shown to me not that long ago. And what, what he's kind of getting at is professional learning. Okay, so we want professional learning, things like this, to influence pupil outcomes. Um, and when we go to events like this, we quite often get an evaluation sheet at the end which asks us, you know, was the tea and coffee all right, did you draw the did you find the venue all right, what was the, room? <laughs> what was the temperature of the room like, um, and which is all good, you know, nice kind of stuff, it might ask you a bit about the training, did you like it, were the presenters good looking, um, <laughs> so which one, uh, uh, that, could, you know, that kind of thing, and, um, and then you kind of have the professional learning itself, the content you might kind of rate that a bit more, um, but Nothing's happening back at base. You know, we're not yet embedding all of that learning. And the, the learning from this, this thing is that point there, down at the bottom on the right, organisation support for change. Think of it this way. If you're going to plant sunflowers in your garden, you've got to look for the right place to do it. You've got to put it in you know, the right soil. You've got to put it where it's going to get the sun, maybe where there's some support so we can grow up the, the side of the house. You're not going to just kind of throw it in gravel. You're not going to kind of put it in the bit of the garden where the, the cat likes to use as a dirt box. You know, you, you, you carefully select where you're going to put it. So this is all about making sure the conditions are right for, embed, for introducing and embedding the learning. So this is why, to just kind of apply it to this, this is the training for TAs. Okay, and we, Paul and I get asked to do this quite, quite a bit. Um, and hopefully we're going to kind of actually bring it up here for you as plans are put to, kind of, to, uh, to do that. But we know that that is only as good as what you do here. Okay, you train your TA so that some of it will work, some of it will stick, but also there'll be barriers and there'll be blockers and there'll be ways in which you, the TA can't use all of those skills because the TA teachers, for example, don't even know that the TA has possessed them, so they can't unlock it. And of course, if you haven't got the kind of meeting time and the liaison time, so that feeds into it as well. Um, so acting on the evidence, things that we have learned. So this is sort of stuff that's kind of um, some sort of branch of um, research around, you know, looking at implement, you know, implementing um, interventions and so on, implementation science as it's known. Um, and, and what we're kind of finding in our own little way when we kind of do do do, do my sort of role, role this down is exactly the kind of things you kind of you find elsewhere. There are consistency. Um, so just kind of applying it, it to my two, the things that make it work, there is absolutely no doubt at all in my mind, having done this with schools for about five years now, that where it works best is when it is led by head teachers. When you have got head teachers who buy into it and go, yes, I get it. All right, this is a this is a leadership issue, this is a workforce issue, this is an SEN issue, this is, a, this is an underachievers um, issue. You know, there are all kinds of ways which you see TAs as being a direct or indirect um, part of the solution to other things around school improvement. And you're prepared to roll your sleeves up, engage with the issues and say, I am going to make those changes. I am going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to I'm grasp the nettle. I'm going to you know, make these kinds of difficult, some, sometimes difficult decisions. Where it doesn't work so well is where that sort of gets given to somebody else to do. And it always works when it's a sort of a middle leader. Not that there's anything wrong with middle leaders. 
But if the middle, if the middle leader isn't, you know, if they're not on the leadership team or they don't have that level of influence, they too will get frustrated because the kind of issues that are being thrown up are the things they don't quite have the control over so they can refer it upstairs. And you know, we, we want to try and get the, 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 the line, the transmission line between the information, the recommendations and the head teachers, you know, the code, you know as short as possible. So we, we really kind of get that loud and clear. Um, Mm, the test video that we mentioned, uh, when you see that, you'll be introduced to Mo Andrews and her team. She's the head of Pinebank School in Sheffield. And they're the case study that the, the video's kind of uh, wrapped around, really. And what Mo did is put together a development team. So this was a team that had a Senko on it. She led it. HLTAs um, are, were on the, the team, teachers as well. So right across the staffing. We don't, um, uh, you know, workforce, and she had maybe seven or eight people on that team. And they helped to kind of roll these recommendations out. And they were also formed part of this small pilot team. So they went off and they tried things out in the classroom and came back to the group and said, well, we tried this way of capturing feedback from TAs at the end of the lesson, and it worked, or it didn't work. And this is what worked well, and this is what didn't work. So there was a real kind of spirit of collaborative inquiry, and it kind of really moved things on, and people got ownership over it. It wasn't just a leadership done to thing, it was really involved <coughs> the TAs, uh, and everything kind of happened a bit gradually. This project here is sort of like a, like a, a full year, and I would say from the experience that we've had, give yourselves that year to unpick the issues, to make the strategic changes, to try things out, and almost have in mind next September when you are going to kind of throw it into fifth gear and it go full throttle with the, with, with the whole school. So all the changes are made kind of at the whole school level. But give yourselves a good kind of time to, to, to work out what you're going to do, work out what the issues are. Because if we have had a one or two occasions where head teachers get really excited about it, really fired up, they make too many changes too quickly. And, you know, it's keeping the plate spinning. So that makes it manageable for you, because you, you know, you've got a lot to be getting on with. Um, the audit thing's there as well. That's there for a reason, because um, that's your homework. That is something that we would like you to do between now and when we see you in October. So um, there's a kind of process around this that we're looking at, um, and I've kind of said what the elements are, but let's, let me just kind of put it together very, very quickly. So it's a, it starts with reviewing where we are, taking stock, being honest, having an honest kind of look at what we're doing. Exactly what Jonathan was saying, like look at your interventions. You know, are they working? Are they not? Be brave. The picture ones that aren't. Um, define the role, purpose, and contribution of TAs. This is the strategic stuff, the bit that you know, I was saying earlier, we haven't really thought about. What does support look like? What does good support look like? What does bad support look like? Let's know it when we see it. Focus on developing up the good stuff. So you have a strategic view of what it is you're going, what it is you're going to, where it is you're going. So your audit tells you where you are, your kind of the, the, this element is the strategic bit, you kind of generate a vision of where you want to go. And then the kind of bit in the middle is how you're going to get there, with sort of a, with an action plan. Um, with uh, you know, it, it, it might in time be articulated in the form of a policy, because we know schools have kind of gone through this process and they've captured that all that kind of shared vision. How it is they operate as a school in, in a policy document? It might just be two or three pages. We're going to bring a template for that next time. So I so said, you don't have to write one. We've just kind of provided it for you and specified where we, the things we think you should be um, yeah, populating with that policy. So that's something to, uh, for next time. And then it's just, you know, just deliver it, to get on with it, you know, make it live in the classroom, refine it, you know, and if things aren't working, it's okay. Um, you know, just learn from it. Don't, don't play it safe and go for the things you think are going to work. It'll be great. Give yourself that permission. Okay, so the the, the review, uh, the audit, sorry, itself. So I mentioned earlier on that we've developed lots of uh, ways uh, into this, and we've done as much of the heavy lifting as we possibly can because you've got uh, the you know, the job of running schools, um, which is you know, important. But we don't want to overlook. We want to come kind of give give this some time. So you've got the rag self assessment. So work through. Through that, Johnson's giving you some suggestion how you might tackle that. You might want to do that at leadership, but you might want to give it to teams and teachers, TAs as well, to have a look at. 
Um, so surveying, uh, surveying staff is a really important and useful thing to do. Let them be part of this process. Let them have their say. Use this like a consultation. So if you go to the um, Maximising TA's website, you'll see uh, one of the options that says apps. Okay? And if you go to apps, you can register to use our staff survey. Okay? Now this works a lot like SurveyMonkey. Okay? You can register to use it. It's a free thing to use. There are instructions on the web page you can download. It will take you about five minutes to register and set up a survey. It's, it's really, really quick. It's really, really simple. And what it does is you, you kind of you have your own sort of school account, as it were, and you can set up a um, uh, uh, set up a survey. You can do as many as you like. So let's have one for September, and then you might come back to it in June. You know, so you've got two surveys asking the same question. You can see movement. And what the, what the survey does is, uh, it's a teacher TA survey, it's done anonymously, we don't ask for names, all we want to know is whether you're a teacher or whether you're a TA. And basically it generates a, a unique um, web address like SurveyMonkey does, that's just for you and your staff and your school. Um, you share that with your teachers and your TAs, they go away, give them a few weeks to have a, have a go at that, should take them about five to ten minutes to complete the survey, depending on you know, whether they want to... Um, you know, write open-ended answers. There's a, most of it's closed-ended questions, tick, ticking boxes, and so on. Um, so what it does is essentially asks the same questions to, to different groups. So you get the two perspectives. TAs views on certain things, all the things to do with preparation and deployment that we've been talking about, and teachers' views as well. And um, you manage the survey very, very simply. You can go in. At the uh, at, at the end, uh, you know, when you're closing date, or whatever you decide it needs to be, hit the button. It generates the report. It's all done for you. Okay, so go and have a look at it. Go and have an explore. Um, it's pretty intuitive to you. The other stuff is um, with a star next to it indicates that there's more in in this book. But um, basically, but the observation schedule is lifted uh, from that book, and there's enough to be going on with. You've got that in the green folders, so there's, you've got a, a version of the schedule and how to use it. Um, it also captures that stuff around TA interactions as well, so you can do some of that while you're doing the observations. Um, if you want to, you could do something like a skills audit, so that would require knowing the names of the TAs for that one, so you could do that entirely separately. On this, you know, list your qualifications, your training, your experience, your talents. Um, this, this has quite an interesting effect. So, you know, some of you already know this. Um, we did some work at a school down in Portland uh, a few years ago. And they did one of these of their stuff. And they, they found they had a, uh, a PhD biochemist among their TA team. And which department do you think the biochemist was working in? You know it's not science, don't you? Yeah. They're, they're allocated to the English department. So you, you, you never know what you might find. So with the, this audited thing, you just might confirm what you've already know. It will identify good practice, it will identify the areas for development. Um, focus groups is something um, you might like to do, because sometimes that's a good way of building on the survey results. The survey results are good sort of numerical things, there might be a particular issue you want to explore with a group of staff. We put peoples in there as well because you really kind of overlook them, which is, which is very naughty, because they are the ones who are essentially on kind of the end of it. So there might be something around asking children what they think of the support that they receive. Um, so a few kind of guiding principles, just to kind of start to draw a few of these threads together. Um, remember, it's, it's kids are at the heart of this. The problem you are trying to solve is how do you meet the needs of the children in your school most effectively. The problem you are not trying to solve is how do we keep you know, X amount of TAs on our staff happy. Okay, now that's a little bit sort of sensitive, I understand that, there can be some, you know, the implication in there, um, you know, is, is, you know, could be that, you know, some schools have gone down the route of um, having, uh, you know, well, you know, getting rid of TAs as a result, because they, their TA team was so enormous, there's 60, 50 TAs, and the head teacher was like, it's just too, I've inherited this from a previous head teacher, it's too much, I need to do something, so I'm just being honest there, I mean to be honest, the, the, the schools that we work with, we tend not to see that happening, sometimes one or two roles 
uh, dispense with, but it's the roles that go, you know, sending the people with it. Um, but, you know, this isn't about, it, it, that's why when you talk about mobilise in, in your schools, it's really important to be aware of those sensitivities. Now, you're out here now, school leaders, at a course, about teaching assistants, but not for teaching assistants. So maybe there's kind of some anxiety back at them, what will this mean for us? Handle it sensitively. If I, if I thought the answer was, get rid of TAs, we wouldn't have made it this far today. We'd all be in the pub. Okay. It's very, very clear that our message is the complete opposite of that. There's a resource, let's work out how to make the most uh, best use of it. Um, doing all of this, doing this kind of auditing thing, don't conflate this with um, a, an assessment of how good your SEN provision is. Okay? There's another tool that I would recommend for that called Send Review, developed by some, uh, some excellent people at the London Leadership Strategy. This is kind of a legacy project of the London Challenge. So if that's something that you, is in your mind you're thinking, oh, maybe, maybe we need to kind of look at our SEM provision alongside this, that's a good tool to use. It's free to download. There's a self-evaluation thing at the back of that, that document. I, I, something to explore. The other thing, um, you know, try to work out what's going to work 90% of the time for 90% of the people in your school. Don't get too hung up. I bet there's at least one person in this room now who's thinking, oh, that's a really good idea, Bob, but that's not going to work for so-and-so in that class. Anyone thinking that? Yeah, because you've all got one. Okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, work out what's going to work for the for the core of your staff. And do you know what? Sometimes those kind of more resistant people, whether it be they teachers, be they TAs, they might sort of come to you. So allow that to happen. Um, I think the other thing I would say, which is quite important, is around this lens for judgment. So just to be clear about that, if you're doing observations in class of what TAs are doing. The first two questions you've got to ask yourself about what you're seeing is what were the leadership decisions that led to that? What were the teacher decisions that led to that? So if you're seeing something you, you're not sure about, ask those two questions first because I guarantee you that is framing that response. Okay, this is not, a, very, very rarely is it going to be a TA kind of subverting the system. Okay, it's, it's really about what is informing the practice you'll see. Ask the questions of the, t of the teacher. Um, what do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So, <coughs> define your own meaningful success criteria and performance measure. What does success look like for you? So, so, do this. Work out when you kind of do your sort of visioning. So, this is the other bit of homework that we would like you to do. We would kind of like you to have it. We're going to give you a bit of time just to have a, have a look at this now, begin some discussion. But this is your, the other piece of your homework alongside your audit. So, in a sense, just kind of clear your, clear your minds. Okay? I didn't take long. And, uh, um, and just don't worry too much about the problems. Just think, right, I am walking around my school now. It's 20, tw uh, September 2018. I'm walking around the school. What are the things that I am seeing and I am hearing in the classroom? The things that TAs are saying to pupils, the things that pupils are saying to TAs and to teachers, the things that teachers are doing, the ways in which they're organising their class. What are the things that you are seeing and hearing that indicate to you that the changes that you have made have been successful? So don't worry too much about what those changes might have been, but just <coughs> the kinds of things that are going to suggest to you, yes, we are, we are, we are, you know, we are well on the road to a much more effective use of TAs. Okay, is that is that okay? So this is something to have a crack at back at base. But be thinking about that. Have a go at that now. We'll give you five minutes for that. But it's useful because these are good indicators. You know, think of these as, as ways of um, evaluating what you're doing. It doesn't always have to be hard data. If the things you are, you are seeing are changing, though the quality of the interaction is different, you are, you're making changes and there is impact. Okay? So let's have five minutes for, for, for a bit of that and then we'll kind of just close for the break.